Before we continue with the analysis, I want to talk to you guys about JerseyFIFA.com, the home of all of the greatest football kits. Whether that's the latest home shirts, the latest away shirts, tracksuits, or even retro kits, Jersey FIFA has a bit of everything. There really is something for everyone, so if you are interested, then make sure to use the link in the description down below and head to JerseyFIFA.com. Hey guys, welcome back to the AJ Analysis channel, where today we are back with another tactical preview. This time, actually quite a difficult one, Manchester United versus Tottenham Hotspur. Now, it's difficult for a few different reasons. One reason, of course, being Spurs are a pretty good team. They've got a lot of good players in their squad, so they're never easy to play against. The other reason this is quite difficult to kind of predict and do a preview for is because they have just changed manager again. So it makes it a little bit difficult to kind of predict their system, how they might set up personnel-wise, what they're going to go for. Are they going to press high, mid-block, drop deep? We just don't really know. What we do know, though, that this squad is damaged at the moment. You know, a 6-1 loss to Newcastle, it hits a team hard. So, we know that Spurs aren't necessarily, perhaps, in the best mind frame coming into this game. However, you know, these, these are professional footballers. They will, they will react to being poor. So, I would expect a reaction from this Spurs team. I think it will be quite high energy. I think they're going to be good in the duels. So, that is something which Ten Hag and his men have to overcome, basically. So, let's kind of look at a few ways in which I think Spurs might set up and how United can break down those different shapes. But before we do that, if you could subscribe to the channel, it would be greatly, greatly appreciated. So my early prediction, if you like, of how Spurs will set up is with a back four. Now, most of the season they have used a back three. And last week against Newcastle, they used a back four. Ryan Mason, in the past, in his previous kind of stints as Spurs manager, has used either a 4-2-3-1 or a 4-3-3. So we're going to start off with that shape and talk about how United can kind of break it down. And then also we will come back to a back three later on in the video because that is also very, very possible. What you will notice with this United team is that there is a player missing. We are missing a midfielder. Now, the reason for that is because I'm not aware of the fitness of Bruno Fernandes. Now, that we've seen the picture of him in the boot. Some people are saying it's just precaution. Other people are saying it means he's out of the game. We just don't know. If Bruno Fernandes is not playing, that is a massive, massive loss to Manchester United, especially if Spurs are going to kind of sit quite deep uh, out of possession. Fernandes is the sort of player you want to try and break them down. United may not have that. So the first thing we need to look at is a couple of solutions. One is to bring Fred in and, you know, kind of bring that energy that Bruno Fernandes would bring uh, to make sure there isn't too much of a drop off in that. In terms of creativity, you're losing quite a lot. But maybe it just means you can push uh, Christian Eriksen a little bit further forward, put him into a bit more of a creative role, have Fred as more of your box-to-box -box midfielder, something like that could work. Or also the other option, which I wonder if Ten Hag might be considering this, is Jaden Sancho kind of in his 10 position and maybe move to a bit more of a 4-2-3-1, which again becomes more of a 4-3-3 in attack. Now, the, the, the kind of pluses and negatives to this, which is why I'm unsure about what Ten Hag will go for, the positive of having Sancho in the team is you are replacing Bruno Fernandes with creativity. You're replacing Fernandes with someone which is going to keep the ball for his side. You know, I talk a lot about United's ability to keep possession in the midfield. Sancho is a player which will help the team keep the ball. Technically, he's very good. He's good in tight spaces. Keeps his passes nice and simple. He would be a player which would help United in possession. However, the concern with Sancho is off the ball, does he have the right intensity? You know, I'm talking about Spurs being a bit of a wounded animal. You know, they're going to come out and fight. United needs those kind of battlers in midfield. Does Sancho really do that? Not so much. So there's kind of pluses and minuses. Would it be Sancho? Would it be Fred? Or will it actually just be Bruno Fernandes? I'm not too sure. I would be tempted, actually, by maybe Sancho and Fred. Something like this. But basically, we're just going to have to wait and see what Ten Hag does actually on the day. Because this is all just speculation. So now for a bit more of a look at the tactical side of things. And I don't think Spurs are going to be a team which are going to press particularly high. I just don't think that is kind of their mindset at the moment. It's not where they're really at as a team. So I do think that United could have decent spells in this game where they are controlling the ball up against this 4-3-3 or at times a 4-2-3-1 like this. The question is, kind of how do you break that shape down? Well, if it was me personally, I think I would continue to build with a back three just because I think it's been working quite well for United lately. So perhaps Christian Eriksen kind of dropping deeper in between the centre-backs could work quite well. We know he's very good on the ball, probably the best long passer in the team. That could be a way of kind of setting the tempo from quite deep. This would also allow Dallo to move inside into this position, Casemiro to play in a double pivot alongside him, Sancho to push up into the half space, 
and also Anthony a bit of freedom on this right hand side, rotating and swapping with wan on the right wing. Now of course the first thing to point out is that in this sort of shape you're going to have rotations. There'll be times where Dallow's higher and wan might be the one tucked in, maybe Ericsson's higher, Casemiro's in the defence, rotations would be important. However, this general shape would give United quite an easy route of ball progression. And the reason for that is because I think Spurs will be quite compact and narrow. Now again, this is all just speculation, we can't really say with any certainty, it's just how I think they might approach the game. But by you kind of building in a back three in this way, which I think United will, it creates easy ball progression in these wider areas. Simply because the movement of the likes of Dallow and also Anthony into this area, it forces the Spurs wingers to come a little bit narrower, which straight away means that a pass either from Shaw to Rashford or Lindelof to wan allows United to move the ball up the pitch. And again, potentially sort of in this sort of situation on the right-hand side, wan could tuck in, Anthony could pull wide because he is better at kind of receiving the ball in this position. It gives United a way to easily progress the ball at the pitch because instantly you've got Anthony versus Perisic and Rashford up against Pedro Porro. For me, kind of two mismatches. I think Porro and Perisic are both good players and both good wingbacks. Fullbacks though, I'm not so sure. As always, this shape would also give United the potential to overload in the middle of the pitch with Casemiro, Dallo, Sancho and Anthony up against the midfield three particularly in situations where the Spurs wingers are pulled a little bit wider. Uh, no matter what way the orientation of the Spurs midfield is, they simply can't kind of cope with this overload. For example, they could go to a 4-2-3-1 like this, but then you've got Dallow and Casemiro kind of 2v1-ing the player in the 10 position. Or if they go into more of a 4-3-3 like so, you've then got Anthony and Sancho in the 2 versus one either side of Oliver Skip. This shape alone is gives United real potential to kind of take control of this game and progress the ball through the pitch. Because it's a 4 versus 3 and with quality technical players like United would have in this situation, it could really hurt the opposition. Now I also like the idea of getting Sancho into this position here. I think, you know, this is where he operates actually at his best, kind of in his inside left half space position, rotating with Marcus Rashford, Rashford sometimes coming inside, Sancho going outside. I think that could actually be a really nice little dynamic. And of course, naturally, playing up against a, a back four, if that is the case, United will have the overload in the last line. Especially if wan is going to push forward down this side, this ability to create a 5 versus 4 situation against a defence, which on paper looks quite weak to me. I think the fullbacks look questionable. Uh, the whole situation basically at the back just isn't very good. There's a reason they conceded 6 last weekend. They're just not in a great way at the moment. So if Spurs do set up in this 4-3-3 or a 4-5-1 or even a 4-2-3-1, I think United's kind of 3-2-4-1 shape with one of the fullbacks tucking into the midfield should allow United to overwhelm Spurs basically. Now with that potentially being the case, I do think there is a genuine possibility that Spurs line up in a back 5, maybe a 5-4-1 like this or a 5-2-3 in attack. Again, I think though that this shape allows United to hurt the opposition. Again, I would be building with a back 3, this time with wan deeper, simply to kind of counter the threat of someone like Hyung min Son. But again, I think this shape should allow United to take control of the ball. Now the reason for this is because still there is this four man midfield here which just outnumbers the Spurs midfield too. Now you can make the argument that the Spurs wingers in Son and Kulisevsky would come narrow, really narrow onto the double pivot and kind of stop this. But then you leave too much room for Shaw to step into on this side which is very dangerous but also wan on this side and he's proven over the past few seasons that he's really good in these areas. And also naturally by stepping forward you do drag the winger out. So again I think it gives United the opposition, uh, the opportunity sorry to go inside the pitch into the midfield where again I just feel like United have too much. Now yes the Spurs centre backs would be aggressive to try and engage them in these areas but I just think the technical quality of the United players in this midfield if they're calm on the ball I think it's just too good. I just think it's too good for Spurs to really deal with even in this system and if you're United are taking control you know Again, there is the opportunity to create that overload on the last line. Perhaps someone like Dallow can push forward into the final third. At, again, there's rotations at times. It would be wan or Casemiro. But again, this ability to create maybe a front six up against the Spurs back five. It just, again, allows United to kind of create this overload on the last line. Again, Spurs' box defence is not very good. The defence is low on confidence. I think it gives United the potential, again, to really, really hurt this Spurs team in almost any setup. Because mentally... They just have to be a little bit fragile at the moment. They're not there. The form isn't good. They're kind of collapsing the second they get put into any sort of bad position. I can see a situation where United really win this game quite comfortably. Now, of course, it won't be easy because Spurs have a lot of good players and their counter-attacking threat in particular will be massive. And that's exactly why I would play wan right back in this game. I wouldn't have Harry Maguire near the team simply because defending the counter just isn't his strength. 
But yeah, this is the sort of thing that I would go for. This is kind of how I can see the game going. It's, it's what I think will happen. Now, of course, like I said right at the start of the video, this isn't the best tactical preview we'll ever do, simply because Spurs are really difficult to predict at the moment. Each week, kind of a different team seems to turn up. Different manager seems to turn up at the moment. So we just don't know how they're going to approach this game. We don't know what the setup will be. However, what we've done in this video is look at kind of a couple of systems which Spurs might use and how United, in my opinion, can really overload and overwhelm it in key areas of the pitch. And if the United players are calm on the ball and kind of follow the instructions of Ten Hag, then they've got a really good chance of winning this game. Now, the fitness of Bruno Fernandes will be a big thing as well. If he is fit and able to play in this game, that would be a huge bonus for this United team because we've seen what they're like the second he drops out of the team. However, even without Bruno Fernandes, I'm confident that United are the better team in this scenario, in this situation. So if the players execute, I am confident that United will win. But let me know what you think in the comments down below. What would you go for in terms of starting eleven? What would be your solution to that midfield problem? If Bruno Fernandes isn't fit, do you go for Jadon Sancho? Do you go for Fred in the midfield? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Let me know your score predictions, all of that. Again, if you could subscribe, it would be greatly appreciated. But either way, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And as always, I will see you in the next one.